it's Jodie here from the Wild Tribe and I'm here in the forest with Harriet today. We are going to tell you all about your activities that are in your wild box for January. We hope you had a lovely festive season and that you managed to make some of the bits in your last box. So you may have made some squishy play-doh or you may have even made some eco wrapping paper. This month is all about nature and getting outside and exploring, especially in lockdown. It's lovely to go outside and get some fresh air. So Harry is now going to go through each stage and tell you what's in your box this month. So this month your activities are bird binocular making, a really exciting scavenger hunt and our special guest Olivia Rose will be going through some tree flow dance yoga poses. So here's your box for this month. You should have had this delivered to you already. I'm going to go through the items and Jodie's going to kindly do some close-ups so you can see all the items as I go through them. So you'll have your postcard and as you know from before that's got all the instructions you'll need on how to find the video. You're going to find in your box four cardboard tubes for your bird binoculars. You'll also find a little paper bag full of decorations ready for your activities. So in this bag there will be some ribbons and a little lollipop stick. You may want to forage your own stick but we pop that in there just in case. There are also some stickers for your binoculars and some masonry twine as well for your binoculars. You'll also find some tree stickers that will be for your map and they are in that paper bag as well. So have a little bit more of a rummage in your box and you will find a clipboard that you can keep. Very useful to have a clipboard. It's got your scavenger hunt on it so you can take this out with your pencil and you can tick off everything from the scavenger hunt. Underneath is your bird sheet which has all the birds that you might want to find as well. So dig a little deeper you'll find your magnifying glass and that will help you on your scavenger hunt. Last but not least you've got your wonderful book for this month which is called Moo. So I hope you enjoy your box and every activity that goes along with it. Next I'm going to demo how to make your bird finding binoculars. So you've got your bird finding chart here which you'll use once you've made them and then you've got enough ingredients to make two sets but today we're just going to make one so you've got two tubes, some twine and some round stickers. So to begin you may want to glue in between the tubes to stick them together and to help them dry you can put two clothes pegs either side. Once they're dry you can take them off and they're much easier to wrap them. I'm just going to show you how to wrap them up first of all. So the first thing to do is do a lovely double knot and attach the two tubes together. If they're already glued then it's super easy this bit. Okay so next I'm going to hold them together and I'm going to wrap round and you can go in between the tubes and make a little pattern whatever suits really. Okay and now I'm going to just do another knot here to attach it on. Make sure you leave enough for the strap of the binoculars. Okay, so now I'm going to chop here for the strap. Next up I'm going to decorate my binoculars with these lovely stickers. dotty binoculars. So next I need to attach the handle here, the strap. So I'm going to ask a parent if you're if you need to and I'm going to cut the sides here. Make a little hole and then I'm going to thread this twine through to make the strap. Please be really careful here with the string and make sure you're supervised by an adult at all points. Oh, 
Okay, so now I've got my lovely strap for my binocular. Look through the binoculars and see and spot your bird. You could look for bugs as well and you could look at nature and you could even use this on your scavenger hunt. So enjoy making these and then have a little look, see if you can spot any birds. time for the scavenger hunt. I've got my scavenger hunt chart on my clipboard and I've got my magnifying glass so I'm going to go and look for a few things. I'm going to look for something rough and, and I'm going to look for a tree. So do you want to follow me and we'll see what we can find? Come on! on my list. I found a really big tree and I found something rough. So I'm going to keep on looking. Don't worry if you don't find everything. It's just about exploring nature and trying to spot different things. You can use your magnifying glass or even your binoculars that you've made. So have fun on your scavenger hunt. So I'm now going to read this lovely book called Tree by Britta Teckentrup. It's got lovely illustrations throughout and it's all about the seasons. So let's get started. It starts off really frosty, a bit like it is today in the forest. In the forest all is still, gripped by winter's icy chill. Owl sits watching in his tree, no one sees as much as he. Snow is melting all around, shoots are peeping through the ground. In the trees young bear cubs play, spring cannot be far away. Little bear cubs look, how cute! <laughs> Blossoms fall and leaves are growing. A gentle springtime breeze is blowing. Squirrels scamper here and there. Playful fox cubs sniff the air. Birds flit through the leafy bowers. The forest abloom with flowers. Birds are singing, foxes play. Summertime is on its way. Now summer's here, the sun is high. Bees are humming in the sky. Juicy apples, ripe and sweet, almost ready for you to eat. On a warm and midsummer's night, all the stars are shining bright. The trees sway gently to and fro, shimmering in the moonlight glow. Now it's cooler all around, apples tumble to the ground. Grass is damp with morning dew, clouds drift across the skies of blue. Autumn leaves turn red and gold, days are warm and nights grow cold. Food is gathered and stored away, ready for a winter's day. The cold north wind begins to blow, animals shiver, it starts to snow. Time to shelter, find a bed, prepare for winter months ahead. The forest floor is snowy white, in his tree owl sits tight. Deep midwinter's here once more, wise owl has seen it all before. It's silent now, no sounds are heard, not a fox cub, not a bird. The trees are still, the snow lies deep, all the forest has gone to sleep. The seasons have all come and gone, snow has fallen, sun has shone. Owls see the first new buds appear. And so begins another year. And that's the book. How lovely. So I'm now going to show you how to make your ribbon wand ready for your tree flow dance and yoga with Olivia. I've got a twig from the forest, but you can use your lollipop stick from your box if you want to. First of all, let's lay out your ribbons. You should have a selection of colours and it's up to you if you want to use all of them or just one or two of them. Now we're going to knot them onto your twig. If you need help with this just ask an adult but it's a nice simple task.
now just cutting my ribbon on a nice slant so it looks nice and neat but you can do this as long as you like if you want them nice and long you could just trim right at the ends if you like make sure you get an adult's help with the scissors so there you have it your beautiful ribbon wand so now you've made your lovely ones it's time to go to olivia rose for your tree flow dance yoga poses Hi, I'm Olivia Hickman from New Guy Girls. I teach yoga and wellbeing to all ages. Today, well, I'm going to be teaching you two yoga poses that you can do, and you can use your magical wand that you created with Harriet and Jodie. So I've got my nice glittery skirt on, and I today I'm going to come into my magical self, and I'm going to be a fairy in the tree. But it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. If you've got anything at home that you can use, maybe you want to be an elf or a pixie, or you might want to be an animal in the tree. You can do whatever you want and use your wand to help to create your imagination and the being that you're gonna be that lives in trees. So to start with, we're gonna create a tree shape with our body. So this is called tree pose. So we're gonna start by just having our feet on the ground. So if you've got shoes or socks on, you can take your shoes and socks off so you've got nice bare feet on the floor. And just notice how the floor feels underneath your feet. And then we're going to practice our balance by just lifting one foot off of the ground. Oh, here we go. And then move over to the opposite side. Ooh, lovely. And then we're going to see if we can place one foot onto the other leg. So you're going to lift one foot off of the ground and place that foot onto the leg. Now we can use our magical wand, we're in our trees, this is called tree pose in yoga. You might want to blow with the wind and you can use your magical wand to create magical shapes. Or if you're an animal, you might want to create some animal shapes with the top half of the body. Just see what feels good for you. And then letting the leg come down. Well done everyone. So just have a bit of a shake out and then move into the other side. So let's see if we can lift the other foot off of the ground. And don't worry if you're falling over and you're a little bit wobbly, that's okay. That means that we're working with our bodies and we're challenging ourselves, so that's okay. So let's have a practice, see if we can get that leg on. And then again, if you've got your wand, you might wanna, you could draw your name with your wand whilst you're in your tree pose, or you might wanna be creating some nice shapes again with your body. So again, just see what feels good for you. And then coming back to centre, have a bit of a shake out. So I'm bringing my fairy goddess to the tree today. So I'm gonna be doing dancer pose. So again, we can make this more into an animal pose if you want to see what feels right for you. So we're gonna use our wands and we're gonna bring our wands forward to help us focus. We're gonna look through the wand and then gently lift in one of the feet off of the earth to the back of the mat. So you're just lifting the leg off of the ground. So again, if you're doing an animal, you might want to create some animal claws at the front. Or if you're being your beautiful fairy self, you might want to extend. And you can maybe see if you can reach that back foot with the hand, hold that foot and reach that wand in front, creating some shapes with the wand. Oh, beautiful, you're doing really well. Coming back to centre. And then over to the other side, stretching forwards, bringing the one forwards, ping! <laughs> and then taking the back foot, create, grabbing that foot, if that feels okay for you, or you can have the back out, the foot out to the back, maybe you could be creating some, if you're in the ocean, you could swim, in the tree, you might be a little insect clawing at the tree, if you're a fairy, moving your wand, being your fairy self, and then coming back. To centre. So that is the end of our practice today. So your two poses, you've got tree and dancer pose, which you can use part of your wand magic with your wild tribe adventures. Lots of love and hopefully see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Olivia. We really enjoyed that. So we've come to the end of this month's box. I hope you've really enjoyed connecting with nature and I hope you remembered your gloves because I'm really cold now. So next month, it will be three more activities. But before that, we'd love to see what you've done and what you've made this month. So if you'd like to share anything you've done on Facebook, you can follow our group. 
and you can follow us on instagram thank you so much everyone and we will see you next month bye